Okay. Uh, what we will do for this last lecture of this section uh, is to, you know, again, just like we did for cylindrical, take an equation in spherical coordinates, convert it to rectangular, and vice versa. Let's consider this equation. Find a rectangular equation for the surface whose spherical equation is given as rho equals sine theta sine phi. Now, this, if you look at work with the meanings of the quantity rho, theta, and phi, it may not be very obvious for us right now to extract like what kind of surface this is, right? So what we're going to do, we need to try to relate this, like we need to convert this to xyz. So the idea here is what? If you remember, y coordinate equals rho sine phi sine theta, right? So what we're going to do is if I multiply both sides by rho, so if I multiply both sides by rho, I get rho square here, and I get rho sine theta sine phi. Now this thing here is y, right? And rho square, if you remember, is x square plus y square plus z square. So you get the equation x square plus y square plus z square equals y, right? Now, what do we do here? Recall from 11.6 that the form of this equation is that of a quadratic surface. And furthermore, what we're going to do is we're going to use the completing the square technique to try to identify which one of the canonical surfaces this one is. Um, so what we do is if you move the y over, um, <clears throat> x squared plus y squared minus y, this is the square. So think of it, this is the minus 2 times y, that means the other thing has to be a half. So it means that we need a plus half square to complete the square, right? Plus, but then I need, since I added a half square, I need to subtract a half square. And you have the z square equals zero, right? Because I moved the y over. And so what you get here, you get x square plus y minus half square. This half square is one fourth. I'm going to move it over plus z square. equals one fourth. Okay, now I think it's easy to recognize. What is this? This is a sphere of radius one over two centered at zero, half, zero. Right? So what is this? A sphere radius one half and center zero one half zero. Okay? Right, so again, let's recap here. The basic idea was to give an equation which relates the rows, phi's, and thetas. Try to see how you can plug, uh, get those into in terms of x, y, z. Remembering the relationships that x, y, z and have with these three quantities. Let's do the next example, where this time we are given a rectangular equation. Okay, x square minus y square minus z square equal 1. Now this is relatively straightforward. We already know what x is in terms of rho, theta, phi, y, and z. So we just go ahead and plug those things. So you get rho square <coughs> sine square phi cosine square theta minus rho square sine square phi sine square theta minus rho square cosine square phi equals 1. Okay? Let's do some factorizing and try to simplify this if we can. Um, if I factorize this thing, I get rho square sine square phi and I get cosine square theta minus sine square theta minus rho square cosine square phi equals 1. And from here I get, if you recall, Cosine square theta minus sine square theta is cosine of 2 theta. So this is rho square sine square phi cosine of 2 theta minus rho square cosine square phi equals 1. Um, 
It doesn't look like we can simplify much more than beyond that. So we're going to leave it at that. Um, I mean, we could have left it actually at this point too. We didn't have to simplify it this way and make it in terms of cosine of the using the double angle formula. But you know, just for you to see how things can be expressed differently and factorized and so on and so forth. Okay, so the hyperbola. Now, let's look at this thing. The hyperboloid of two sheets, okay, is not an object that's symmetric. It's more cylindrical than it is spherical in the sense that it has a one axis as opposed to you can draw axis in many ways. So its equation in the spherical coordinates looks fairly more complicated or unelegant compared to the equation in the rectangle coordinates. On the other hand, this sphere, even though it has a sh shifted center, its equation, the sphere being a spherical object, its equation was relatively simpler. Right? That's something you're going to see in general that objects which are spherical, uh, symmetric about a point, tend to have simpler spherical coordinate system equations. That are symmetric around the axis tend to have simpler equations in the cylindrical system. Okay, we will end at that, and that finishes section 11.7 for us, which also finishes chapter 11 for us, which was basic 3D geometry.